then in that case, the time is 7.12. The meeting is now called to order and now we'll proceed with the land, land recognition. Um, if you could go to the next slide. Okay. Um, Western University is situated on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, Lunapuak, and Attawandran peoples who have long-standing relationships to the land and region of southwestern Ontario and the City of London. The local First Nation communities of the area include Chippewa of the Thames First Nation, Oneida Nation of the Thames, and the Muncie Delaware Nation. In the region, there are 11 First Nation communities and a growing Indigenous urban population. Western values the significant historical and contemporary contributions of local and regional First Nations and all of the original people of Turtle Island, also known as North America. We'll now go to the Western song. It might still be... Unless... Hmm. I'll Unless do it, Peter... I don't care. I'll do it. You want to... Okay, amazing. Peter's going <laughs> to lead us. Go for all it. All right, sweet. Okay, wait. No, I'm not going to turn my camera on. Be awkward. Okay, here we go. Western, 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 you, college fair and square. Arts and meds are strong for you. Deny it if you dare. White and purple colors are worn by y'all who know. Just which college is the best? Come and let us show that this you is our you. For her, we'll strive to do our best and fight with might and main. What's Spain? We will always adore her. Our own alma mater, Western School of Fame. When Western U goes marching down the field, we know that our team will never, ever yield. Though the other team has lots of pep, lots of pep. When they meet our team, they'll know they're out of step. And when the game goes down in history, history is just another Western victory. Then all the cheers go out for Western U, Western U. Ra, ra, ra. All done. Amazing. Woo. Really earning the the Mustang Spirit Award. Love it. Okay. So with that, we'll go to roll call. Um, please go to Echo 360 um, to show that you're present. Okay, um, we're now going to approve the agenda. Is there a mover? Oh, yeah, is there a mover? Uh, Councillor Kermack, is there a seconder? Uh, Councillor Flaherty? Um, so on the agenda today, as it stands, we have the motion to approve the executive reports. We also have three motions coming from EA, the motion to approve the USC, House, USC housing policy paper, the motion regarding all official council stands for food and, food and security, and the motion to approve the USC tuition and sector sustainability policy paper. Um, we then have the approval of the experiential and work integrated learning policy paper. Are there any amendments to be made at this time? I can do it if you want, Emily. Yep, Councillor Kermack, go ahead. Okay, a uh, uh, motion to add uh, the um, the bill one six six recommendations motion. Okay, uh, Councillor Kermack is the mover. Is there a seconder to add this? Councillor Slavsky. Um, and then are there any questions on adding this to the agenda? Seeing as there are none, are there any points of debate or amendments to be made towards adding this to the agenda? I'm going to forward this to Melissa as well. Okay, um, with that, please raise your Zoom hand if you have any objections to add this motion to the agenda today. Okay, if there are none, then it will be added. Are there any further amendments to be made? I think there's one more. <laughs> oh, actually, I'm left. maybe there isn't. Okay, then if that is it, then we can now vote on the agenda as it has been amended. So please go to Echo 360 to do so. The agenda 
um, is passed unanimously. So we'll now move on to the approval of the minutes. Is there a mover? And you can find the minutes in the agenda for this meeting. Are there any, is there a mover for this? Councillor Goddess, is there a seconder? Councillor McDonald, are there any questions about the minutes from the last meeting? If there are none, are there any points of debate or amendments to be made regarding the approval of minutes? All right, if there are none, please go to Echo 360. Okay, the minutes are approved and will stand. So we'll now move on to our first um, motion of the evening, which is the motion to approve executive reports. Is there a mover? President Ajak, actually, my... uh, uh, Councillor Kermack and then Councillor Solowski will second. Exec, you have the floor. I would argue that we have the screen, but I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to our last uh, council meeting before AGM. Uh, just, you can imagine having to do this every single day, not every single, every single month during COVID for like hours on end. Like I I am uh, I'm not jealous of Matt Reeser and his uh, council for going through all of that, but uh, we're definitely lucky with our regard. Uh, anyway, so moving forward, I'm going to be quick with our exec reports. I know we want to get out of here. I guess we want to close our screens pretty soon. Uh, but if you have my report open here, uh, I, I don't think it's on the screen, but if you have it open, uh, it's linked in the agenda. Uh, I just wanted to follow up with the USC entrepreneurship that I told you guys about. Uh, we had our event, it went swimmingly. Uh, we had three amazing winners, student winners who won their cash prizes. Uh, first place was a student named Lily. Uh, she has a product called Be Safe. Um, she, I actually have it right in front of me here. I wanted to show you guys. It's, um, it's a cool little bracelet. Uh, and on this is like women's safety products. So there's a whistle, there's an alarm here. Uh, and she makes it really like pretty. So if you're ever in the, the, the bookstore or info source uh, and you want to support her amazing business, she makes these great little things. This one was done in Western theme. Uh, so I think it's awesome. Uh, she does she does great work. Uh, second place was uh, a man, uh, second place was a, a man named Ryan. Uh, he has a, a service called Mapo, which helps with um wayfinding on campus. And then third place was a group of three amazing students, Aaron, uh, Alice, and Aiden, who had Frigosphere, which was uh, an online platform to help students with budgeting for, uh, for the price of groceries. So I think that was amazing. Uh, so some general updates moving forward. As you guys know, transition has been going well with uh, USC president-elect Emily Collagen. Uh, on that note, we had the incoming and outgoing president's dinner. Came and went on April 5th. Uh, the same time we were having the USC award ceremony. So it was a busy time in the wave. Um, but it was amazing to see all the bright new faces that are going to be leading the faculties in the next coming year. Uh, on that note, in terms of amazing dinners, we had the CIA celebration there. Uh, and I know it sounds really cool, but it's uh, the coordinators, interns, and AVPs. We all came together to celebrate the amazing, incredible work that they accomplished this year. Uh, some of the last days will actually be on uh, Friday. So if you had a chance to interact with any of the interns or the uh, AVPs and coordinators, uh, make sure to give them a great, big thank you through DM on the great work that they've done. Uh, on that note, uh, two presentations that I had uh, in the month of April, really big ones, uh, our budget presentation, I was not done presenting that. Uh, and I did my last one with the Board of Governors uh, two weeks ago. That went well, they passed it. Obviously, we have a great budget. Uh, and then today, actually, for the first time ever, uh, we were invited, myself was invited to the Board of Governors to present on the student experience and how the USC benefits that, uh, which I could probably say went amazing. And they think so highly of all the work that you guys do now. So good, good stuff there. Uh, last but not least here, before I get into my wins, I wanted to follow up in an effort of transparency on uh, the Gazette procedures that I mentioned way back when, when we were doing the budget uh, presentation. 
So I followed up with the complaints that I received uh, with respect to misinformation with the Gazette. And this included frank and meaningful discussions with representatives from the GPC. So that's the Gazette Publications Committee. Uh, I, I personally am really satisfied with the complaint procedures followed by the Gazette. And I encourage concerned individuals to contact the Gazette's front office or members of the GPC if they have any questions or complaints. So. Honestly, in order to in order to further assist in this regard, uh, there's been a I we attached a copy of the Gazette's complaint process uh, in the minutes of today's council meeting, so you can see that below. Uh, in terms of some good wins, uh, finally uh, planned my post president vacation. Yes, every president takes one uh, to thank themselves. I am off to the uh, I'm off to Thailand for the month, so that's going to be really fun. Uh, I met with Michael Burns, so he was a president in 1993. He's actually the first president to ever have this office, um, which is unreal. Uh, so it's, it's it's great to see some familiar faces. And speaking of presidents, uh, you guys may have seen it in a Sunday series, but uh, nine years worth of USC presidents all sat down to dinner uh, about two weeks ago, uh, including the incoming president, Emily, Emily Collegian. So it was an amazing moment to see some old faces. They all um, are all doing well, just in case you guys have not seen them in a while, they're doing great. Um, but yeah, that's wow. That's my last. It's my last update. Woo, let's go. Okay, I'll pass it on to uh, I think Maria or Emily is next. I'm not too sure. I think I'm going next. Um. Okay. So for my completed this month, I had the AI town hall with Mark Daly on March 25th. It was really great. We had about 30 students show up, and we also how to goes that article out of that. So really excited for that. Um, another thing I worked on this month was accommodations for relig religious and spiritual holidays. So I worked with the EDI office and Susan Lewis, who's vice provost academics, and I kind of helped work on the definition of spiritual. So I was excited to see that go into the policy. I attended uh, Western's mental health strategic plan, um, their first meeting, and they're hoping to have a survey out. So I was helping uh, make some survey edits for students. I attended two events this month, which was Mustang Awards and USA Pie Head last week. This month, I also helped with a kosher meal event. So that was working with Western Hospitality and Hillel Western. So that was on April 11th. Um, the next thing is Advocacy Day, which happened on April 2nd. And if you want to see, we printed out rave cards with all our advocacy wins. And I put a picture into the doc if you want to scroll down. Um, I filmed a UA cooking show. It's called You Ate with UA. And it was kind of to talk about the kosher halal advocacy and um, showcase that more. Um, the next thing completed was the EL and work integrated learning paper, which we're going to be talking about later today. Uh, for ongoing, um, I worked on the add and drop deadline with Susan Lewis again, and this was brought to SCAP. So this is something I had been advocating for all year, but it didn't really pick up any momentum until this month. So I helped Susan Lewis to kind of give the student perspective on this, and I'm hoping that it's a positive change that might happen before next year, but not too sure. It has to go through a few committees. Right now, we're also doing prompt videos using ChatGBT. So on our socials, and I think I reposted it too, helpful prompts for study tips. So you just insert, hey, ChatGBT, I'm freaking out. It's 2 a.m. Help me create a study schedule. So prompts like that. And then we also have a contest going on so students can um, go into the Google form, come up with their own prompts, and then they'll be selected for a prize. Um, this month, I also am working on um, the new SRA or the draft for academic considerations. So this is something I was part of all year round and hopefully it's, it gets showcased next year. So I'm looking forward to doing more draft edits this month. Um, for the dot update. So right now I'm working on the timeline for machines. Um, they most likely, it will happen during the summer when the students aren't really here. And I'm hoping to provide a better update once I have some, some more details as well and transition sessions with in incoming VPs. And then for upcoming, um, there will be an EL work integrated street style video to showcase some of the recommendations. Um, I have a CBC interview tomorrow actually, so I'm gonna be working with Tamsin on that. I have a Walls of Champions dinner on Friday, which I'm excited um, since it kind of falls under my portfolio, um, sports and recreation. And then 
Once I have better details on Free the Dot, I'm hoping to film an update and announcement video that will be going up on our socials. It's just so everyone's updated. And then, of course, my final report. And then my three wins for this month was because of the add and drop deadline that finally picked up the momentum. I was able to complete all my roadmap items, which I was really excited about. I got my wisdom teeth out two weeks ago, still healing from that. And then I also got into my master's. Yeah. And then the rape cart, I kind of posted it down there. Those are kind of the big wins that we put in for Advocacy Day. Yep. That's all I have. Any questions? I'll pass it to Emily then. Sorry, thank you. I was trying to pull it up on my screen and it was not functioning. Uh, hi, everyone. Last one. Almost done. I'll promise I'll try and keep it quick. Uh, so I know I say that every time, but I, I promise. Um, so uh, completed. So we had our Women in House luncheon on March 23rd, so very shortly after our last um, my last report uh, was a success, got positive feedback from both the mentors and the students who attended. Uh, city councils who did the panel were also quite happy with how it went as well. So good vibes all around. Um, and so huge support, um, huge shout out to staff and, and the exec team who did a lot of work on this, um, specifically um, Melissa and Rebecca. So huge thank you to them for doing a lot of the organizing behind the scenes on that. Um, advocacy day in the atrium so that was um, mostly spearheaded by Maria but EI was also there um, Maria's team really did the heavy lifting on this as well as my coordinators uh, but it was really an opportunity for both of our portfolios to kind of talk about some of the advocacy we've been up to this year uh, so some of the things that we highlighted for uh, for EA included um, the continued tuition freeze from the provincial government um, the fact that composting is finally come to London after four years. Um, and we also did some activities to kind of talk about um, how all these things impact each other. Um, and also on our continued advocacy on removing interest on the provincial portion of student loans and the impact that the um, existing removal of interest on federal loans has had on students in terms of cost, um, just to kind of illustrate what that looks like for the average student. Uh, the USA Board Strategic Planning Retreat. Um, so I mentioned this last time, this is something that I was spearheading within USA um, to give um, USA C as a board of directors time to um, have conversations that we just hadn't had time to have over the last year because, um, you know, running USA as an organization, sometimes you don't always have time to have some of the, the bigger philosophical questions that are really important when it comes to leading a nonprofit organization. Uh, was overall uh, a success. It really opened up some really big conversations and I'm really happy with how a lot of those conversations went. Um, and we were able to discuss the future of USA in a lot of different ways, um, including um, what our staffing needs are going to look like, um, whether we're going to expand staffing in the next couple of years, um, as well as if we're going to need to increase fees, all that kind of stuff. No decisions were made on any of that officially, but um, we were kind of, we were able to make some recommendations to next steering committee. So they're able to take that information and do what they will with it. Um, just with the insight now of us having done a complete year on steering committee for two, for some of the steering committee members. Um, an awesome thing was USA was awarded the Student Organization Award from um, Palo Stability Seeds, which is a consulting organization uh, that works on gender equity in Canada. You might have heard of the Courage to Act project, which is a really big um, government funded project on campus sexual violence. Uh, so they did awards with to honor like kind of the conclusion of Courage to Act um, with some of their partner organizations. And USA was one of the ones that was featured as a student organization working on gender violence prevention, which was very, very exciting. Um, USA Home Office and myself and a lot of alum who have worked on uh, gender, viol gender based violence in particular were very excited about this. So super happy that that was, um, that the work was recognized. Um, our colleagues over at the, um, our Alberta equivalent were also recognized, so it's great to see lots of other student organizations doing this work. Uh, as um, Maria mentioned, the USA Partners and Higher Education Dinner happened, so um, Sunday and Marie were there alongside the incoming advocacy VPs and ad and president, uh, which is great. So Pi Head is basically or, an, an event where all the USA schools come together, administration, all those folks are there, um, and it's a gala. The Ministry gave remarks, uh, was a really big success. Um, stakeholders were very, very happy with how it went, um, and the teaching award 
this year was given to Dr. Riley Henson in psychology, um, who does a lot of community engaged learning and who works a lot on um, research and uh, on drug addiction within student communities. Um, one of the big things is I mentioned this last report. Um, there's the Bill 166, um, also known as the Strengthening, Strengthening Student Support and Accountability Act. Um, so that's the bill that is bringing forward the requirement that universities and colleges in Ontario have a both a student mental health policy as well as an anti-racism racism policy, um, as well as gives the minister the power to ask for transparency around fees. So um, I had a meeting with the minister's office to kind of better understand some of the language, uh, just because some of the language in the bill is a little bit vague and we weren't totally sure where they were heading with it. Um, so I was able to get a little bit more insight from them, um, as well as testify to the standing committee of social on social policy um, on the 15th um, on some of those recommendations. So we're going to talk about the recommendations I talked about a little bit later on, um, but basically making sure that student voices are being consistently prioritized within the renewal of these, very similar to what's already done within gender-based violence policies. Um, another great thing that happened that I was very excited to see was that our pre budget submission recommendation on removing uh, the provincial portion of OSAP um, interest was reflected in the Liberals' demands ahead of the budget. Um, so this came out probably like five days before the budget. So the like right after our last um, meeting so that's very exciting um, especially because um, I met with the person who with the uh, uh, liberal critic for finance so very happy that that made it into the budget uh, into their budget demands so hopefully that means that we are um, having influence and that we are continuing to be able to be um, consistent and prioritized in the conversation um, that's happening at the table uh, both within in the opposition parties and also within government Provincial budget and federal budget, both those came out with very different responses. Provincial budget, uh, no new funding announced other than the $1.3 billion that was already announced in February. So overall disappointing. Um, nothing really in terms of student contributions, nothing in terms of OSAP or anything, um, which is not what we want to see. But, you know, we don't when you can't with what happened with, with the federal budget, I feel like kind of evens out a little bit. Uh, federal budget was a huge win uh so out of the seven lobby acts that casa had five of them were budgetary this year and all five of casa's recommendations were taken up within the budget which never happens um so the recommendations were on maintaining the increase to the canada student grants so increasing maintaining the increase from covid um, that was maintained at about 40%. Uh, it was a $500 million mental health, youth mental health fund, um, as well as a whole bunch of money put towards housing, more money put towards the post-secondary student support program, which supports Indigenous students. Uh, it goes, the money goes directly to um, band councils, and that's distributed to students, and it's a huge support for Indigenous students, um, as well as a huge increase in graduate research funding. So super happy to have this all come out. So what we want to see, um, some of you who may pay attention to politics know that this budget is very much branded as a youth budget. So not only did we get these wins, but there's other things that we were not actively advocating on this year, but that are also great. Um, that include adjustments to housing calculation for financial aid so that some students will get more money allocated to them to pay for housing costs, um, more money for work integrated learning, um, additional loan forgiveness programs for key sectors, the removal of GST and student residence constructions, um, additional public transit funds try a time to being about 800 meters from a post-secondary institution to help bolster lines alongside where public uh, post-secondary institutions are, as well as limiting the credit student for mature students' loans. So overall, a lot of really, really good stuff and really happy to see that. Um, so that's super duper positive. Um, and then I don't know how this ended up on under the federal budget stuff, but we also had our last USA transition, uh, our last USA steering committee meeting on Monday. Um, and we had our transition and alumni events. So um, officially that is starting to move over to the next steering committee, which is super exciting. Um, and the new team got to meet a whole bunch of new and old faces at USA. Um, so some ongoing stuff that's going on is finalizing the list of recommendations on USA membership review to give to the incoming BPA. So she gave a full picture, especially in response to the conversations that were had at Board Retreat. Just want to make sure that they're relevant and that they are um, reflecting the conversations that are being had. Um, and the other thing is that USA's research and policy analyst, one of them, uh, Ananya, is, is leaving and we are hiring a new research and policy analyst. Um, and I'm on the hiring panel, but part of the reason I want to mention this is if any of you are graduating and looking for full-time work, this is a great opportunity to get your 
um, to get into policy. Um, it is quite well compensated for a full-time job. I'll be transparent. It's 60K per year. Um, so if you, any of you are looking for a job starting at end of May, uh, applications are due on Friday. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but super exciting. Uh, highly recommend. Really rewarding work. Uh, and you get to work with awesome people from across the province. Um, and then right now, the upcoming thing um, is mostly transition, which is, you know, very sad and very sweet at the same time. Uh, so really looking forward to getting Michelle um, as prepared as I can um, heading into this role and really to be able to hand off everything to her. And happy to take any questions. Okay, Bianca, I guess you're up then. All right. Um, hi, everyone. I hope you're all doing well and your finals went well and packing up wasn't too terrible. Um, I have a couple things on here, probably a couple things I forgot because we haven't met in a while, but for my completed, um, all my coordinators completed their final reports so that is awesome. Each of them did a final report that myself and my AVP um, designed for them to complete. It was like a little worksheet just to make it a little bit more guided and thorough to ensure that they included all the information that would be helpful for future coordinators and also information that might be helpful for um, the incoming VPSS Daniel so he can kind of learn a bit more about each portfolio as well. Um, also got to close up the peer support center as well as the food support services. So usually it closes around when we run out of um, volunteers to keep the space open. So it depends a bit on our volunteer schedules, but both close not too um, late into final exam season. And with peer support, um, myself and my AVP Natalie went into the space made sure that all the furniture was where it belonged, sanitized some spaces, um, cleaned up the snack station and ensured that facilities was coming to do a deep clean of the floors and furniture. And then closing up food support services, making sure that everyone got their hampers and was able to get food before we closed. And then taking all food that would expire over the summer over to the London Food Bank and just cleaning up a bit there. And lastly, we finished CGB hiring. So that's really excited. The new CGB is beginning their transition and their training right now. So as you might remember from the beginning of the year, we did a huge shift in all of clubs and that included CGB. So I'm really excited to see how they transition this year, being able to do so with the outgoing team and get a little bit more mentorship on their journey before they start it over the summer. Then ongoing is transitioning with the new VPSS Daniel, which has been going really well so far, um, completing my final report as well as all the transition documents that I've made for him and closing up any final projects that I don't want to leave left over for him to have to work on. So that includes a couple grants that we received for the soap stand machine and the hydroponic library through food support. So just getting those organized and Upcoming is transition, so just preparing for that. And my three wins is that I did a coordinator hangout with all my coordinators at the rec room as a little appreciation. Um, and it was really fun to go with them and I made scones for them. We all just hung out at my apartment and it was a really fun time. And it was great to just hang before um, saying goodbye to them. So that was awesome. I renewed my passport, which was a long and hard journey because I had to apply for a brand new passport. Um, and Service Canada is scary. So that is one of my wins. I'm proud of myself. And lastly, the spring weather. I am so happy that the sun is coming out and that it's getting warmer because it just feels great for the soul. And yeah, that's my, my report. Are there any questions? Okay. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Oh, that's me. Sorry. 
Um, hi guys, sorry, I won't be turning my camera on because I'm not fit to be seen right now, but it's nice to hear you all. Um, so mine is super brief. Um, I feel like I also forgot things, but you follow the Instagram, hopefully. Um, I had my late night breakfast, which is always a hit. Um, we did one more de-stress fest with Weldon. So I brought like iced coffee and iced tea and cookies. We also had like our therapy dogs and the petting zoo again which was really great. Um, my coordinators also completed their final reports. Thank you, Bianca, for the worksheets. Very helpful. Um, and we also had a last um, brunch together, which was really, really cute. Um, ongoing, I'm transitioning Sarah. She's really great. Um, we've I finished all my transition documents and we're halfway through our sessions together. And then we're just, um, we have a lot of like orientation transition sessions. So I'm just keeping orientation afloat until she can start next month. So I'm just still meeting with stakeholders and stuff. And then just wrapping everything up. So like cleaning up my drives, organizing my emails for her, stuff like that. Um, and then upcoming, I'm peacing out. Um, and my wins are Sarah's really great. Love her. Um, I went to the beach last week on one of the warmer days, which was really nice. And I found a really good restaurant in Wortley Village. So everyone go to Wolfpack Company Bar and try the hummus. It's really good. Um, I think I'm next and last. It is so nice to see your names again and some of your faces. Um, I feel like I was gone for so long and no time at all. Um, been back for about like a week and a half now. So not much on my exec report, but completed. I healed, which is awesome. Um, and then I had tasked all of my coordinators with kind of like six week long projects while I was away. Um, and so when I came back, I kind of like went through the work that they did. And it was really awesome. Um, my campaign's coordinator, Monty, developed an advocacy roundup video that's going to be releasing out on socials very soon. Um, my community engagement coordinator led the led and like managed the back end of the Coffee for Coordinator initiative. You might have seen it on our Instagram. Maybe some of you participated and coffee chatted a coordinator on AVP during recruitment season. Um, we actually had over 140 people sign up, which is double than last year, which is so awesome to see all these students who are like really interested in getting involved. Um, my brand journalism team published four new stories and then my AVP worked on Vo uh, Voices Volume 2, which is like a special edition of USC Voices. It's a collection of stories from like personal stories from 13 very passionate student leaders and it varies on topics from like resilience to success. It's, it's really cool. It's something we started last year and we did again this year. So hopefully a new tradition. Uh, ongoing is transition so trying to fit everything that is in my brain onto a piece of paper so it's taken a lot of time but Shreya is like really really great it's also really exciting because I get to transition almost like a new role so um, it allows me to think kind of like creatively and like even give her space to like really create her own ideas and, and help her like figure out what she wants to do which has been really awesome to see and upcoming an awesome VP student engagement, Shreya. Um, so hopefully some of you guys see her, interact with her at some point. Um, or if you see her on campus next year, go up and say hi. She's really awesome. Um, and then my three wins, which I didn't write down, but one of my wins, probably my biggest win, is I learned how to crochet while I was off because I had a lot of spare time just sitting around. And so fun, so cool. Uh, another win is I went to the CIA dinner um, which was really nice because I was well enough to be able to drive and come see my team and like just kind of give them the things that they deserve because they worked really hard this year. Um, and my last win, I think, I think it's like coming back, even though I'm coming back at a time where I'm leaving, but it's really nice to like see all these people again. I really miss this place. Are there any questions? Nope. Thanks guys. Okay, so if there are no questions, then are there any points or of debate or amendments to be made to the motion to approve executive reports? 
Okay, seeing as there are none, please go to Echo 360 to vote. Oh, I think some people have... Um, I don't, I don't know. Should I ping the channel? Is everyone is everyone present and voting? I I guess um Echo three sixty sometimes logs you out, but please vote. Yeah. the executive reports passed unanimously so we'll now move on to the motion to approve the usc housing policy paper um so whereas housing has become a growing concern for western students and students across the country and whereas the usc has limited current stances on housing issues hindering its ability to advocate on housing and whereas council has taken the executive to create a has tasked the executive to create a housing policy paper to support this advocacy Advocacy be it resolved that council approve the housing policy paper. President Ajak is the mover. Is there a seconder? Our councilor goddess. And then President Ajak, you have the floor if you'd like to speak. Emily, do you want to give a quick like 30 seconds as to what's going on? Yeah, it's pretty, I mean, policy paper, you guys all know what it is. Um uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, it is something that is addressing a couple Western issues, but is primarily um externally facing. Um, it both addresses some elements of housing quality, but primarily focuses on in terms of on supply and availability, um, just because that is both what we've heard a lot of kind of talked about in the discourse and also what we have the most research backing up. Um, so that's what it's mostly focused on. Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's policy paper. You guys have all read a policy paper before. Okay. Uh, are there any questions on this? Seeing as there are no questions, are there any points of, de of debate or amendments to be made to this motion? If there are none, please go to Echo 360 to vote. Hmm. Sorry, Bella, I think I missed the seconder on that one. Who was the seconder? Councilor Goddess. Thank you. All right. This motion passes unanimously. So we'll move on to our next, which is the motion regarding the official council stance for food security. President Ajak is the mover. Is there a seconder? Councilor Batista. And then President Ajak, you'd have the floor. Bianca, do you want to speak to this as well? Yes, I can definitely speak to this. I'm trying to start my video for you guys. There we go. So it's pretty simple. Basically, what we're trying to do um, is just have an official stance on food insecurity. As you guys have seen throughout this year, um, food support has been a really huge focus um, for myself and for my portfolios. And um, it's definitely something that I kind of expected, but didn't fully understand the gravity of it. And it's um, become really clear that there's definitely going to need to be some advocacy for food insecurity in the near future. And we want to make sure that it's easier for us to do the work in advocacy if our um, UA and EAs wish to do so. And also make it easier to um, also just talk with stakeholders about food insecurity and prove to our stakeholders that this is a really um, big and important concern for us to be paying attention to. And of course, having this, um, having an official stance just adds a lot of strength to our messaging when we are having these conversations. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. It's pretty um, simple. I'm not sure if anybody has questions.
not look like there are any questions at this time. So if there are none, are there any points of debate or amendments to be made to this motion? Oh, sorry, I, I started voting early. Okay, if, if there's no points of debate or amendments to be made, please go to Echo 360 to vote. Okay, we're still waiting on a few people to vote. All right, then this motion also passes unanimously. So we can move on to our motion to approve the USC tuition and sector sustainability policy paper. President Ajak is the mover. Um, would anybody like to second? Councillor Ratanchi, uh, President Ajak, you have the floor. Emily? Again, policy paper, pretty straightforward. Um, this reflects the changes that we put forward um, we, that we asked for in November of expanding the tuition paper to from just tuition to include sector sustainability including things like operating grants all that kind of stuff um pretty straightforward the one thing that i'm going to specifically note on this particular motion is that this motion would tie the tuition sector sustain sustainability paper to the student financial aid paper um, and that's done for a very specific reason uh because ontario is what's considered a high aid high tuition jurisdiction so Comparatively, compared to some other provinces, we have higher tuition. We always have, we have generally had higher financial aid in order to compensate for that. Um, so when you talk about tuition and on, in most jurisdictions, but especially in Ontario, you can't talk about one without talking about the other. Um, so in order to make sure that we aren't writing con conflicting stances and to make sure that we have cohesive advocacy on this going forward, this would make sure that the tuition paper is always renewed in the same year as the SFA paper so that we have a very consistent advocacy strategy on this. Um, just as an example, even within the Blue Panel Report, which is focused primarily on the sector sustainability of universities writ large, they specifically talk about OSAP and the importance of having strong OSAP for students because the panel recommends a tuition freeze, which we don't like. But again, it's important to have both of those things be cohesive. So this would just mean that the tuition policy paper is renewed a year early, as opposed, so it's only going to be for two years instead of the normal three to make sure it's at the same time as the SFA paper. Other than that, it's a policy paper. You guys have been here for a whole year. You guys know what this is. All right, then are there any questions on this motion? Seeing as there are none, are there any points or de of debate or amendments to be made to this motion? All right, if there are none, please go to Echo 360 to vote. This motion also passes unanimously. So we'll move on to our next motion, which is on the approval of the experiential and work integrated learning policy paper. Uh, Councillor McDonald is the mover. Is there a seconder? Councillor Solovsky? Councillor McDonald, you have the floor. I will let Maria speak on this. Okay, thanks, Roma. Um, so just like Emily said, there's another policy paper about UA. Um, I ended up putting experiential into the title just, be just because there were some recommendations that were a little general and it really didn't fit into the work integrated learning policy paper. And I think overall, if another university wanted to look this paper up, experiential is kind of known more. So I decided to put both of that in the title. But other than that, yeah, if there are any questions, I'll take that specifically on the paper.
Okay, it does not look like there are any questions at this time. So if there are none, are there any points of debate or amendments to be made to this motion? Does not look like it, so please go to Echo 360. All right, has everyone who wanted to vote voted? Okay, in that case, this motion also passes unanimously. And we'll move on to our final motion of the evening, which is the Bill 166 motion. Melissa, I sent it to your email if you can add it. I, I forward it to you if you can. Did, did you Are, get it? Already in there. Okay, perfect. It is in the agenda. Um, it should be at the bottom. Yep, there it is. Um, Stavros, do you have it? So we can put it on the bottom. Okay, amazing. So the mover was Councillor Kermack. Is there a seconder? Okay, Councillor Jan. And Councillor Carmack, you have the floor. I move my speaking rights to Emily. Sure. Thank you. Uh, so the TLDR of this motion is a gap in policy once again strikes and we need to pass these. Th this is passing through what I spoke to the committee already about. Um, I did talk to my standing committee about this beforehand um, following my conversation with the minister's office. Um, and basically, this is just the recommendations that I made to the Standing Committee on Social Policy um, to help give more um, more strength and uh, better um, enforceability of the bill. Um, as it stands, the bill is quite vague. It's basically just like every school must have a policy and the minister's directive will give more information, um, which is not super transparent but this is what we wanted to do to have more clarity around what we want to have in the directives be so um specifically in the bill it has um it only requires that these policies be read every five years every five years would mean that if a bill was, if one of these policies was passed this year immediately it wouldn't be reviewed until 2029 it's not being reviewed during people's undergrads it's not super acceptable and not super responsive to um changing landscape changing all these different things especially around mental health and racism which are both very much topics that will change from year to year depending on things that are going on within the world i.e global pandemic maybe um, so by reducing the review time to every two years it means that the policies will be, able to be more responsive to what's going on um, the additional uh, parts of that is also requiring in the directive that student input is, is in, involved in the review process including the involvement of student associations um, so I'll also preface that a lot of this content is very similar to existing legislation for gender race violence prevention. So a lot of this is taken either from Bill 132, which is what implemented the mandatory sexual violence policies on campus, or from uh, Regulation 131.16, which is like the content of like, it must have X, Y, Z thing in the policies. Um, so this is where a lot of this is coming from. And so this is to make sure that students are actually being involved in the review process. Because um, institutions will often not automatically want to have student review in this they'll want to have it much be much more through legal and through the Board of Governors. So by requiring it in the directive, it will make sure that students are directly consulted, but also that student associations are consulted um, because student associations will often have more of the ability to give more of the policy background and be able to have more of that collated data. Um, so because sometimes institutions will be like, we consulted two students and then there we go, 
student consultations done, which is not what we want to see. So by at least making sure that they're consulting with student unions, the student associations, that's being more that's being more fulsome. Um, also to require voluntary training to be provided to members of the campus community on policies, content, and processes. This is also taken very, very similarly from the regulations on gender-based violence prevention. This is so that people, so staff, faculty, student leaders, everyone is able to, um, we can't require it because of collective agreements, but that this way we're able to actually ensure that people know what's in the policies. They're able to help guide other people through it and have that training available to people who want to be able to want to understand more. Um, additionally, um, that we want to make sure that the uh, policies for student mental health include information on short and long term accommodation. We would, honestly, when I first read the legislation, I wasn't really sure what they meant by a student mental health policy, but it's both in terms of basically care plan and care provision, as well as in terms of like accommodation. So we want that to be more explicit within the directive. Um, also, I'll backtrack. Minister's directive is like not a piece of legislation, but it comes from cabinet. So basically, this bill allows the minister to issue something from cabinet saying, OK, this is what needs to be in in the, your policies. Um, and then for the, this is supposed to see, um, say, student policies on um, racism, uh, it's supposed to include reporting timelines, uh, reporting processes, accommodations for students are su subject to instances of hate, as well as appeals processes. So again, very similar to GBSV policies. Um, and then finally, um, to require that the minister, um, that th the minister should require that the annual report to the Board of Governors. So the bill requires that there be a, an annual report made to the Board of Governors in terms of like, progress on the policy, all that stuff, um, to include data around the number of and nature of reports and other efforts around it, surrounding, around addressing racism and discrimi religious discrimination, just making sure that within those annual reports to Board of Governors, that those are being consistently um, reported so that we have good data as to what is actually happening on campus. So happy to take questions on all of this, but this is kind of what I already um, talked about and I'm happy to add, give any, if you guys need any clarifying questions or anything. Amazing. Are there any questions on this? Okay, if there are no questions, are there any points of debate or amendments to be made to the motion regarding Bill 166? Okay, seeing as there are none, this is going to be a Zoom hand vote. So we're going to need to, you, you guys, you're going to need to listen up here. And, and <laughs> okay, if you are in favor of the motion that is currently on your screen, please raise your Zoom hand. And, and keep it up until I, until I say. Okay, has everyone who wants to vote in favor raised their Zoom hand? Okay. Oh, it counts it for you. That's that's kind of nice. Okay, lower. Okay, no lower. Okay. Uh, those against, raise your Zoom hand. Okay, and those abstaining? All right, in that case, this motion passes unanimously. And that is our last motion of the day. And with that, we can move on to our four information items, which there are none, and then there are no four discussion items. And now we'll take questions and comments from the Western community. So if anyone without speaking rights has anything to say, you can raise your Zoom hand and speak. All right, then there is no new business, I don't believe. And okay, Councillor Wasty. Motion to adjourn. Okay, uh, seconder. Councillor Kermack, are there any objections to uh, termination? Okay, if there are none, this is this is obviously this is a, a one meeting of the month um, type of month. 
our ne the next time I should see all of you is May 7th at the AGM. I will send out multiple reminders, but in order for us to, you know, we want to set a good example for the rest of the, for the incoming counselors. So let's all try to be there so we can get quorum. Um, are there, is there any questions? Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Um, I think uh, it, it's a Wednesday, right? Because it would be May 8th, I think. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep, you're right. It's May yeah. 8th. Amazing. We voted as May 8th. Yeah. You're totally right. It is May 8th. Okay, May 8th. Sorry about that. May 8th, I will see all of you at the AGM. Tell your friends, tell your fellow counselors. Um, if they're absent, start calling them out by name. Um, but in that case, then I will see you all then. It'll also be on Zoom. It's been an honor. I'll see you all then. Stay back if you have any questions for me or anything. Bye.